Hi everyone, CG7 here and welcome to the Fluent 2.0 course. In this course, I will teach you all you need to know to make most of your art surface scenes. Uh, if you don't know what Fluent is, it's an art surface add-on for Blender. Uh, I'll let you install it if it's not done already. And let's dive right into the first part of this course. To open Fluent, press F. You will see the Pi menu. Uh, the main tools are on the left. Uh, on the right side, we have some extra tools. For the bottom part, we have the bevel menu and the power trips tool. Uh, if you only have the basic version of Fluent, you will not have those tools. So let's start by creating a Fluent object by clicking on this icon. To show the grid, just right click in your scene. You can start drawing a rectangle by clicking on the dots in the center and moving your mouse. To make the shape from the center, hold, shift and move your mouse. Once you're happy with the shape, you can left click to validate. If you move your mouse left and right, you can adjust the height. If you hold left click, you can see some options. Uh, the offset will allow you to move the shape's origin. To validate the shape, move your cursor to validate button. If you hold left click, you can see some tools that you can use on this shape, but we will discover them later. To complete the shape, move your cursor to the icon on the right. You can also right click. This does the same thing. Those edges look a little bit too hard. Uh, we can add a bevel with the Fluent menu. If you want to adjust the size of it, uh, you can do it in the Bevel with option. We are going to start with the slice operation. To show the grid, right click on this face. Draw a rectangle and move your mouse so the slides go through the object. You can do it easily by pressing V on your keyboard. You might not see your slice and this is because the bottom of your slice is perfectly aligned with the bottom of your object. Uh, to fix this, you need to press G, then Z and move your slice a little bit down. For me, it's fine. Open the Fluent tools and select first bevel. Move your mouse to the left, then press X to deselect all the corners. Move your cursor to the top left corner and press X to select it. Do the same for the right part. You can now right click to validate the slice. I would like to make the out part a bit smaller. Go to edit mode and scale it on the Y axis. Go back to object mode. Let's make a cut for the door opening. If you misclick, you can press R to cancel the drawing. If the grid resolution is not good enough, uh, hold V and move your mouse to the right. As you can see, I got the issue I was mentioning before. So to fix it, I'm going to move down by pressing G, Z and move it a little bit down. Great, we are going to add a bevel on the top corners as we did previously with the X button. Notice that you can change the type of the bevel by pressing C. Add the taper and adjust it just before the bevel is clipping. We have a nice shape. 
but at the bottom, it doesn't look good. Uh, we're going to scale it and move it a little bit down. Let's mirror it to the other side. You can also do it by pressing M. It's time to cut the door now. Uh, do a basic rectangle cut and scale it so it fits. Good. Select the door and go to edit mode. Scale it on Y so it's a little bit smaller than the out part. The shape tool will allow us to make a custom shape for the slice. But first, scale the grid. Start drawing by clicking on the dots you want. If you misclick, you can press backspace to cancel the last dot. Once you're done with the shape, hold shift and left click. We can add bevel to those corners with the X key as usual. Let's make a window real quick with the cut tool. Uh, you can see an artifact here and we will fix it right now. Right click to validate the cut and show the wireframe by clicking on this in the Fluence menu. We can see an edge that is not correct and those edges are calculated by Blender. Uh, we need to help him so it makes the edge in the middle of the cut we just did. Go to edit mode press ctrl r click and move the edge in the middle of the cut make sure that only the edge you just created is selected go back to object mode uh, every time you add a support edge like this you need to use the vg cleaner tool now the edge is correct Uh, the bevel is a little bit too much, I will reduce it. If you adjust the bevel on the other object, it will automatically apply the same width as soon as you click and drag a little bit on uh, the bevel width menu. I would like to add some rounded corners for this part. Uh, to make this, we will use a very useful technique named Cut the Cutter. Uh, go to Fluent menu and show the Boolean object. You can also use the shortcut greater than and lower than. Select this one and use the Cut tool. To show the grid without dots, hold Shift and right click on the face. This will allow us to use the Shape tool with more freedom. When you're using the shape tool, you can hold control to snap the drawing by 45 degrees. Hold shift and click to validate. We can mirror it to the other side. The fact that the Boolean object that we are cutting is already mirrored to the other side will reproduce the cut we just made. Since it's not placed as I want, I will move it and change the shape in edit mode. We can add small doors on the sides uh, to make access for maintenance, for example. Uh, if you hold control while drawing a rectangle, it will make it square. We can add a cut 
into the door to add a little bit of detail. Um, don't make it too deep. We will use the cut, the cutter technique once again. If you shift click on this icon, you will be able to cut directly on the cut you just made. Use the shape tool and make a diagonal. If you press space, it will create a path. Use the mirror on two axes to make a cross. If you have artifacts like this in the corner, you can increase the thickness of the path. Some artifacts will be fixed later. Like we did with the window, select the object, show the wireframe. Go to edit mode and add some edge loops with Ctrl R. Show the booleans so you can align it more easily. Make sure you selected only the two edges that you added and go back to object mode. Use the VG cleaner. We still have an issue here and it means that we need to move the edges a little bit. We will add details to the sides. Use the shape tool with the free grid. With control, make a shape like this and mirror it to every side. If you add a bevel, make sure it doesn't clip on the top. We can create a cool part for the handle uh, with the shape tool and the free grid with the control key. Using a taper is a fine touch for this kind of detail. All right, we are done for the base shape and now it's time to add details to it. Uh, I will see you in part two of this course.